All right, guys, it's that time. Put your hands together and please welcome your moderator, host of AOL Build, Ricky Camilleri, and today's guest, there she is, Isabel Furman. Look at that dress. Thank you. Amazing. I, I thought I would wear something bright for you guys. And not just bright, it's, it's beautiful. Thank you. My friend Christian Siriano designed it, so I was. Well, that's cool. Yeah. No, he's awesome. So he, uh, he, I didn't realize it was like last minute last night. I texted him like, "Hey, can you send this to me <laughs> so I can wear this tomorrow?" So yeah, no, he's awesome. Designed specifically for you? No, no, no. Oh. This is just, yeah, it's part of his collection. But I tried it on a while ago and I really liked it, and so I was like, "Please send it to me so I can wear it." <laughs> you know, pink is not a color I typically wear, but I was like, this "What's is your awesome. color?" I don't have a color. I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, my mom would say yellow looks really good on me, but I typically go with, like, you know, black, white, neutrals, like that sort of thing. But I can't handle any colors outside of really, like, black, white, or blue jeans. Outside of that, I'm very uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, I, this is not a dress that I would wear to, like, breakfast or, like, to go walk around. It's just a little bit too, like, hey, what's up? But, like, for something cool like this, it's really Yeah, perfect. you dressed up for us. Thank I you. I dressed up for you guys. Well, let's talk about uh, Dear Eleanor. Let's talk about this movie. This is a different kind of uh, role for you, I think, because I think a lot of people know you from The Orphan, where you're sort of quiet. <laughs> yeah. A bit menacing. Uh, yeah. A bit creepy. Yeah. Maybe evil. Typical words used to describe <laughs> that character. For but sure. in this, you are bubbly, happy, and, I, and talkative. I think you're even referred to as motor mouth at, at times yeah. in the movie. Yeah. No, it was it was really cool to actually get to play a character like Max the Wax because she's so, I feel like she looks at movies and, and she's such a movie buff in, in the film. You see, like, she's got photos of, you know, Elizabeth Taylor and Jackie O and, and Elvis Presley and, like, all these amazing actors on her wall. And she wakes up every morning and she's like, who do I want to be today? She wonderfully recites the opening of Sunset Boulevard. Exactly. In the movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had to watch that movie so many times so I could learn that because I wanted to learn it from the movie like she would rather than, like, learning the monologue by reading it. Lucky you, um, it's an incredible it's a great movie. movie. Yeah. Um, but she's one of those people who's very iconic and she kind of takes her life with, with so much zest and she's so innocent and loves being a young girl. And it was so different because from Orphan where I played, I mean, spoiler alert, I played a 33-year-old woman passing herself off as a child. So it was really cool for me to be able to kind of step away from that and get to play a child who was so happy to be a child. And it's kind of you know, trying to help her best friend stay young while still chasing after her dreams and, you know, even goes as far as to help her Aunt Daisy chase her dreams. It's really like, I feel like the movie is so powerful for young women because it's like a, it's like a women power anthem, but in a film format. And in a period of time that we normally wouldn't see movies that are uh, female power anthems of any kind. Exactly, yeah. No, 1960s. And, and it was so cool to kind of like walk onto that set and really feel like, we were not only a part of, you know, this era and this time, but really feel like we lived in it because, you know, there was a, like a abandoned street in Colorado that they completely built up to make to look like the 1960s. It's, and it looks so good too. I mean, yeah. I, I was genuinely shocked when I was watching the movie at how incredible the production design was. Like, it's very beautifully, beautifully done. And the director, who I don't know if you guys recognize his name from the trailer, it's E from Entourage, yeah. Kevin Connolly. Exactly. He does, he does a really wonderful job uh, with the film. What was it like working with him? He was incredible to work with. You know, I signed on to the project about a year before Kevin did. Um, I read the script and I fell in love with it. And I was like, I have to find a way to get this movie made. And it kind of bounced around. And then Liana Liberato, who played Ellie in the movie, signed on. And she and I kind of were, we got to sort of audition Kevin. I mean, he already got the job to direct it. But it was really cool that we got to sit down with him and hear what he wanted to to do with the film and he had such great ideas and we really kind of collaborated together to make this movie and so for people to be able to see it now oh, that's really so great. cool i feel like how, how old are you right now like, i'm 19 now I, that's a rare occasion i think for a 19 year old to be sort of entrusted that way with with the movie <laughs> and for a director to work so closely with them well i mean the movie was written by two best friends um amy and cecilia and so the movie is kind of like came from their heart in a lot of ways even though they didn't actually go on this adventure together you know it, it was from a place of like let's write a movie about young women sticking together not fighting over boys or fighting with each other all the time but about young women really helping each other and trying to better each other um and i thought that, that was such a powerful message and i think that 
you know, because of that, they really entrusted, you know, Liana and I to help make this movie, you know, what it was. And, you know, it was through those conversations, I think, that we were able to make the movie that we did. And what I like about uh, these two women sticking together is that when it does come to a fight about a boy, it's not about a boy at all. It's about two people growing in different ways. Liana's character is becoming a bit more of an adult a bit faster than your character due to the situation that she's in with her mother passing at the beginning of the film. And you're sort of, as you said, trying to hold on to her and sort of keep her a bit more of a bit more innocent and a bit more like a child. And you become a little bit jealous, or at least you don't understand where she's going at that point. Yeah, and I think that's a really beautiful thing about friendship, too, is, you know, we grow so differently as people. And sometimes, you know, we our friends grow more rapidly than we do, and we grow apart for a brief period of time. And then you come back together, and it's like it never, never happened. So I think that it was a really well-done story about, you know, about these two young women going on this adventure together, chasing their dreams with each other, and really wanting to, you know, spread the word that, you know, I, I want young women to see this movie because I feel like there's such great people to look up to, Ellie and Max and Aunt Daisy, who chase their dreams. And uh, I want to go back to this. You said you watched Sundance or Sunset Boulevard a number of times. Yes. Uh, were there any other movies that you watched from that time period to sort of uh, get your mind into the, the time? Yeah, I mean, I, I watched a lot of old films. I like films from that era. Like, I, I'd seen um, All About Eve and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. And, you know, I think kind of going into that realm of watching old cinema and falling in love with, you know... Old divas. I mean, old Sunset divas. Boulevard, all about Eve, mm -hmm. whatever happened to Baby Jane. You're well, because it's, a, it's important for Max. I mean, Max was one of those, is one of those people that I feel like is very upset in the, in the way that her life is. I mean, her, she comes from a broken home, and she really tries to look on the bright side of everything. Very um, theatrical, too. Very theatrical. And so she kind of finds, like, her way in the world by being this theatrical, bubbly person and trying to help other people stay optimistic. And I think that that's, you know, a really beautiful thing. And I think everybody has a friend like that, you know, that's always trying to get you to look on the bright side and trying to keep your, your, your spirits up when things go down. And so, you know, Max was just one of those people that I was like, okay, every morning I was like, who would Max be today? What iconic character did she look at? And was like, I want to be this today. Like, when, Who would you go for? Like, well, for example, when they leave on the road trip at the beginning, you know, they, they're going on a road trip, and she decides to wear a white dress and a headscarf and big glasses because she wants to be like Jackie O going on a road trip. And Max is one of those people that curates, I think, the life that she wishes that she could have. And she sort of gets a version of it at one point in the movie when the movie almost becomes uh, a a movie that she would like to see on her own with The Fugitive and with Jessica Alba's character. Essentially, everything that she's been sort of pining for and trying to curate happens to her. Yeah, it's like it's like the secret, you know, you put it out there. She puts it out there that she wants to have this road trip with her best friend that's epic and amazing, and it happens. How did you work with uh, Kevin Connolly? You said he, you know, you got to sort of audition him, but I mean, he got the job. But he already had the job, yeah. We just got to sit down with him and kind of talk to him about what we thought of the movie. And he came with this amazing image book that he had made oh, wow. um, of, like, different photos of America that, it, you know, in the, in the 1960s. And he was like, this is what I really want to capture. You know, I really want to capture the moment of, of this time period where people thought that at any moment the world could end and, and how people just went for things that they wanted to. And you're not just an actress. I mean, you're not just showing up to set these days. And it sounds like you're really committed to the whole process, though. You've written a short film yourself, haven't you? Did you? Yeah, I've written a short film. I actually just finished a play that I'm hoping to kind of get made, which that would you be wrote? great, that I wrote myself. That's um, incredible. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, I'm writing a few, like I'm writing a screenplay right now, but I have, I've been writing since I was very young, and I've directed two music videos, so I definitely want to get onto that side. Um, but I think, you know, I'm 19, so I'm still kind of developing my style and seeing things that I like. And, you know, I think a lot of things that I experience as an actor influence me on a day-to-day. -day. So what is, it, what is it like for you? When did you realize that you were not just an actress, though, that you wanted to be sort of involved in the entire process? I, I always wrote. I mean, I, I came up with ideas from the time that I was really, really young. And I actually had, you know, some things in the works when I was, like, 12 that I had written. Um, and, you know, sometimes those things don't come to fruition, but it was really cool to, to be a part of that, and, and that was sort of, like, my first leap into it, and I think as I've grown and as a person and as I've seen more of the world, I've kind of been able to figure out what kind of stories I want to tell, and, of course, that'll change because I'm still growing, but as of right now, I think, you know, the stories that I want to tell, I, I've just started to write them, and I've started to do it, and I think it's kind of in this 
whole Lena Dunham, you know, she wrote and directed and produ produced Girls, and I think I saw that, and I was like, this is something that I could do. It's such an exceptional thing that you get to be sort of a young actress while at the same time wanting to write and direct because it's a, essentially a mystery how the whole process works if you don't get to see it firsthand, be it as an actress or a PA or as anybody that's involved with the process. The actual process of getting a movie made and what it's like to shoot things out of sequence and put an actor in front of lights is a mystery to most people. Yeah, I mean, it, it's interesting because I feel like I get this master class every single time I go to work. Um, when I get to be on set with people like Kevin and like Steve Fearberg, who are our cinematographer, who did, I think, an amazing job. I mean, they we shot on a digital camera, but he made sure that we used 1960s Panavision lenses. So that way... Tell. The framing is very much like a kind of mm -hmm. splendor in the grass, uh, sort of Nicholas Ray Rebel without a cause yeah. framing. Big, wide frames and mm -hmm. sort of putting people on the right side or the left mm -hmm. side, distancing them. It's all kind of there. Yeah, and it was all very intentional. He want, We wanted the movie and, and to, to feel like, like the 1960s. And I think Kevin and Steve Fierberg and the art department and Justine, our costume director, we the, all really were so passionate about making this the movie that it turned out to be. And so when we all came to set, it was like we we got to be in that world. We got to feel like we were in that world. Um, and that's so amazing as an actor to be able to not only like step into a character's outfit and clothes and shoes and feel like them, but get to look around and literally not even be able to catch the moments where you're seeing something from your time period. You just feel like you've been transported. And I hope that people have that feeling when they see the movie. Absolutely. I want to go back to another movie that you were in that people love, I love, Hunger Games. Yeah. You played Clove. I did. I did play Clove. I'm sure you've been asked this when you were doing press for that movie, but I didn't watch any of those interviews, so I'm curious, how much knife throwing did you uh, have to learn? I actually learned how to throw knives, and it, which was really... So if I know. brought knives out right now on a target, you could throw them? Guys, I could, I can haven't, bring them? <laughs> guys, can we bring them out? I haven't actually like done it since the movie because it's not exactly a hobby that you know you can just easily you know, pick up and you're like, oh, hey, you know, I live in Los Angeles, which is a city, and I'm just going to go throw knives in my backyard. Um, I live in an apartment, so that wouldn't go so well. Um, <laughs> I feel bad when I said, guys, someone clapped. I think they actually thought that I was going to bring knives out. I know. Like, I got I nervous for a second. somebody, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I can throw knives. I haven't done it in a while, so I, I wouldn't know how good that I would be, but hopefully muscle memory. But we, we they started me off with, like, tennis balls, and then they moved it to, like, plastic knives, and then they moved it to, like, weighted aluminum pieces, and then they, they actually were like, okay, now we're going to throw knives against a box, and you're going to try and hit it here. And I was like, so oh, cool. okay. Yeah. That's it was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. No, they did a really great job of, of, again, like, as I said, you know, it's so important when, when you're working as an actor, I feel like, to kind of, like, be able to feel like you're that person. And so being able to learn a skill like that really ties you to your character. So, you know, I myself, I mean, I'd like to think that I'm a badass, but Clove is definitely a badass and she knows that she is and she's really tough and she's really strong. And so having a skill like knife throwing that I could, I could, you know, imagine myself that I, you know, knew how to do this and I could do this at any moment. And then actually to learn how to do it was, such a like a weapon to have in my arsenal, so that way I could pull well, it out. It, I mean, if you learn how to throw knives and that takes a certain amount of focus, then just that idea of how you focus yourself while you're doing that can sort of bring you to the place of that character and how they focus themselves and what they look like when they're throwing knives, how they change their body and stuff like that. Yeah, and I was playing a career tribute who'd been training for years for the games. So that was really important to me that I looked the part that I physically felt like I was capable of, you know, taking down Jennifer Lawrence, who was like, a lot taller than I am. I mean, I was 14 when I did it. Um, but you were a huge fan of the books, right? Didn't you write a letter to Gary Ross or something like that? To I try wrote to a letter a to part? Gary Ross, yeah. No, I was a huge fan of the books. I'd read the books so so many times, and you know, I think it was one of those things where I was like, I really want to be a part of this movie. It would be so great if it would happen. And, and I wrote a letter to him, of course, about Katniss, because I think everyone, when you read the books, kind of relates to her, because you, you're reading it through her eyes. Um, and I went in and auditioned for Katniss and then got a call like a week later and they're like, would you come in and read for Clove? And I was like, sure. And then like, two weeks later, found out that I got it and then I couldn't tell anyone for a few months, which was crazy because all of a sudden my, I got like a meal plan that I had to go on and start eating right because they really wanted to train us like we would as if we were training for like the games and my character again. 
as I said, I was training for this her whole life, so I needed to know what I was doing. So I went from like eating regular food, like what you do in middle school, you know, lunch from school, to like having these like leaves in boxes with like giant pieces of chicken breast and potato and like, like a lean grain. protein diet. Oh basically. yeah, yeah. And they originally were trying to get me to gain muscle, which at 14 is like not gonna happen on me. <laughs> and so then they were like, all right, we'll just lean you out. We'll do the other thing. And then I was instead of doing PE with everybody else, I was like running a few miles around my uh, like on my school's track, like <laughs> with a weight vest on because I was like. No trying to build my that, that you were doing this because you were in the Hunger Games? No, and it happened to her. <laughs> they were like they would always just ask me they're like what are you doing? Why are you doing this all of a sudden? I was like just trying to get fit. You know, like that was my excuse, you know what I mean? And they were just like why? I was like just cuz, you know. And then I would just make some excuse. Did you me. have did you go to school with other actors or actresses at the time or any of no. them else performing performing? <laughs> no, I went to a regular You were school. really a freak at that point. Yeah, you were like no. just trying to get fit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, who's this weirdo? Like in PE we play ultimate frisbee, like we don't do anything. <laughs> we just sometimes even just like get a note so we can sit and do nothing and she's like asking for more stuff to do. But or is that like a performing arts arts high school? They'd be like, "Well, I no. talked to my agent, and she got the Hunger Games. So that's why she's doing this." <laughs> Not at all. It was it was regular high school. You know, went to, went to school regular. I was such a big nerd. I like you know, I I had a like a weird sort of experience in school because I was always trying to overachieve and get like the best grade in class because I I loved school. Um, so I was such a nerd. I was like front, middle row of every single class. Rub like, it hand in people's raised. faces when you got the better grade. <laughs> no, no, of course not. Oh, I would never do that. But it was like, it was it was funny because hey, suck it, yeah, yeah and, like, suck it, away. come on. No, but it was it was great. It was a uh, I had really great friends that you know one of them. <laughs> who I love, my friend Lizzie, locked me in a bathroom because she was like, why are you doing all this? Tell me, you booked a job, I know you did, what was it? And I couldn't tell her. And I had to escape through the window. <laughs> because I was like, I was like, I'm not, I can't. That's where your clove training came That's into where it full came into handy, you, right? Yeah. I know. But yeah, when she found out, she was like, I knew it. I knew it the whole time. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right. Awesome, thanks for locking me in a bathroom. That was like a scary moment in my life, but all right. Luckily, I was lean, and I was able to Luckily, climb I was out lean. that window. Could slip out that window, <laughs> no problem. Uh, let's open it up to the audience for some questions. Who in the audience has a question? You, sir. <laughs> hey, Isabel, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, so, with every role that you've tackled, whether it's from you know Orphan or Hunger Games or your TV role in uh, Masters of Sex, I feel like you've transformed yourself oh, with thank every you. role. So, I was just wondering, like. Do you feel you've evolved as an actress? Yeah, I think so. I think every year is, I mean, I f I'm so young, so every year I feel like I grow so much as a person, and I feel like with, you know, from each movie that I do, I learn something different, and I think I take away something from my character for myself as a person. Like, when I did Dear Eleanor, I really like left that set and was like okay i'm gonna remember what this feels like of being so light and so airy as a person and being young because i i did orphan before that and i felt like i had to grow up so fast and learn how to be an adult and so it was cool to take that away from from that and then you know masters of sex i mean tessa is a completely different character than any of them i mean she's she's growing up she's trying to rebel against her mom she's trying to find her place in the world as a young woman um, and so being able to kind of dive into that right after I did this, which is the same era, but instead of being this young, innocent girl, I'm, I'm a young woman whose mom works in this, you know, in researching sex, which is a topic that people didn't talk about at that time. So, I mean, I feel like every single time I try and tackle a role, I try and go from it with all sorts of different angles, and I try and s sign my work, I guess, and do something different than what's necessarily on the page, but I think that that's where I grow as a person and where I get to collaborate with a director and really work on making something special. What do you think the single biggest thing you've learned uh, about working with directors is since you've started? Oh, it's all collaboration, 100%. Because, and it's same with a writer, too, because, you know, it, I didn't write Dear Eleanor. Amy and Cecilia wrote Dear Eleanor. So, you know, I meet with them and I talk to them and we discuss things and I'm like, oh, I saw this this way. And they're like, no, well, I saw it more this way. And then we find a compromise. And then Kevin comes on board and we're like, okay, so this is what we kind of both want. And so you just try it different ways. And so and, and eventually, like, it's so fun. The first week of filming is always so electric in the sense that everyone's kind of finding their character. They're finding who they are. And even though the, we've done all the research and you've done all the work, now we're, like, collaborating together and we're doing scenes that, that aren't necessarily in order. 
and we're finding our character every single day with each other and discovering new things. And then by the end of the first week, it's kind of like, okay, now I know who I am, and now I know where I am, and now I can keep moving forward as this person, and I have this relationship with this actor and this actor and this actor, and it's, you know, you collaborate with them too. I mean, it's such a collaborative business, I and mean, you can't, it takes a village, you can't do it on your own. Right, so you gotta be a good listener. Yes, 100%. <laughs> uh, next question, hey, you, sir. Know. Thanks Hi. for being here. Uh, what are some of your favorite road trip movies, and do you have any personal favorites in your life of road trips? Uh, well, the, my favorite personal road trip would probably be the road trip that I did after this movie, because when we wrapped, Kevin wanted to get actual shots of us in the car driving in different uh, states, because we didn't have that. We were only shooting in Colorado. So Liana and I hopped in Kevin's Range Rover, and we drove every single day for like a few hours, and then we would you know, stop off in a different state in a different area, like Moab we stopped in, then Hurricane um, Utah we stopped in. And we would get out and we would get in our costumes and we would hop inside the car and we would shoot for like two hours. Then we'd get back in the car and I'll go out to eat dinner and then the next day we'd do the whole thing again. And that was probably one of my favorite road trips because, you know, I, I hadn't actually gone on a long road trip other than when I drove to California from Atlanta with my mom. And that was like when I was really young and I was just glued to my video iPod. But this was like really seeing everything and getting to talk with people that I got to spend so much time with and, and really like love and really good friends. Um, and then favorite road trip movie. That's really, really hard. Um, I mean, I love Thelma and Louise. I watched that a lot before I did Dear Eleanor because, it, you know, I think it, it's kind of similar, very different, but similar at the same time. I think we have time for one more question. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I love Masters of Sex. It's one of my favorite shows um, on TV right now. Um, and I was wondering what it was like working with Lizzie Kaplan and Michael Sheen. They're so amazing. Um, I have, I, every single time I, I go to work, and, and go on Masters of Sex, I just feel like I'm in, in the presence of such talented people. And, and like I said, you know, with collaboration, Lizzie and Michael were so great at collaborating with me, especially as a new person on the show that's been around for two seasons before, before I got to be involved in it. Um, and they really were just so helpful. And even when I did, like, I had a kind of uncomfortable scene with Michael in the first episode of the third season. And he was so sweet and gracious. And like the minute they called cut, he would like cover me up with a blanket. And it was just a really cool experience to be around people that not only like knew the rhythm of the show and how everyone worked together, but also like were willing to welcome me in with such open arms. And, um, and Lizzie's given me such great advice about like this business and how funny it is and how, you know, it's it's hard to like remember. I think everyone kind of relates to this when when you love what you do and you're and you're young. You kind of feel like it, you know it should be happening more quickly. But you know it's nice to ha kind of have somebody like Lizzie in my life who can be like, you've got so much time, and and she's been really great at giving me advice. So, and yeah. the 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 business moves a lot slower than I think people expect or understand yeah. it to. It takes time after an audition to to get a part. You know, moment you feel a certain momentum emotionally. Yep in an attachment to something, and that may not come to fruition for six, month, six months to a year, or it might get delayed and canceled altogether. Yeah, no, it's it's very true, and sometimes, you know, you, you work on something, and, and you know, it, then it just kind of disappears, and they lose money, and you're like, okay, this isn't happening, and then they call you, and they're like, we're shooting in two weeks, and you're like, wait, what? What do you mean? We found some poor sucker to give us money. <laughs> we found no one, him. No one tell him what's going on. We're shooting now. No, but well, Dear Eleanor was something that I'd been signed on to for a long time, and, and that was sort of the case. I mean, we, you know, Liana and I had been a part of it. Kevin had signed on. We were all working together to try and get it made, and it was one of those things where there was a moment where we were like, it's going to happen, and then it didn't. And then we got a phone call, and they're like, we're leaving in three weeks. It's happening. Wow. And even Liana and I were on the phone, and we're, like, packing, and we're like, is this, this is so cool that it's actually happening. Like, it's finally happening. Well, uh, congratulations on the movie. Thank you so and much. It's on iTunes now, right? People can watch it on iTunes yeah, now? Yeah, people can watch it on iTunes. So please, please see it. Um, you know, we really need to support young female leads in film. So please go see it. Absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.